Welcome to Conversations with Leaders. My name is Miriam McLemore, and I'm an enterprise strategist with AWS. I am thrilled today to have the opportunity to speak with Mark Bigor. He is the CEO at Equifax. Mark, welcome. Well, thanks for having me. Could you tell us a little bit about Equifax and your role at Equifax? Sure. I'm the CEO of Equifax. I joined a little over three years ago. Um, you may know it was quite public that Equifax had a really challenging uh, data security breach. And I joined soon thereafter that um, to really lead the turnaround of Equifax and recovery from the uh, cyber event. And it's not easy. It was a, quite a challenging time. Uh, you know, there was a lot of hearings in Washington. Uh, we went through about a lot of legal issues. We lost the trust of a lot of our customers um, about our security as a data analytics company and the data that we hold on consumers yep. and small businesses is really quite proprietary and losing that trust took a while to build it back. And that was really what our focus was when I uh, joined. Equifax is a uh, global company. We've been around for 122 years. It'll be our 122 year anniversary this year. Actually started in Atlanta in a uh, grocery store that had a file card system around offering credit to their consumers 122 years ago and it developed into the data analytics company it is today, which is a you know, global uh, um, company that really delivers data um, to financial institutions, insurance companies, telcos uh, to do decisioning. Wow, that's a great, I had never heard the history story. I love that, especially native to Atlanta. So that's- Well, I actually think about story. Equifax as being a, a new company. You know, we really call ourselves now the new Equifax. You know, oh. after 122 years and after what we went through in April 2017, we really had to remake the company. And right. uh, a big piece of that was what we invested in our data and technology. At our heart, a data analytics company is a technology company. And yep. uh, that's really where Completely. we focused a lot of our efforts following the cyber event. So as you came in to make that transition and transformation of this company, was everybody behind it? Was the board all all in and ready to, to make this transformation? Uh, not when I joined. Um, I think we were really trying to figure out where do we go? Um, when you go through an event like this, it's, um, it's really unprecedented, the scale of it. And at the heart of your company, um, you know, really um, putting that kind of pressure around the trust of the data that you have and can you protect it. And so one of the first things I said actually before I started was, you know, we will be an industry leader in data security. You know, when you go through a cyber event like this, you set a yep. bar and setting a bar of industry leader is a bar that's quite different than we're going to be good at it right. or get better. You know, we right. said we're going to be an industry leader. So that was number one. And then we started rebuilding a team. Uh, really in the early parts of my uh, tenure in kind of April, May, June, July, we brought in a new CTO, Bryson Keller, um, brought in a new um, chief security officer um, who really changed the game. And we really focused on, uh, you know, where are we going to take ourselves from a technology company? And I think it's really important to think about a company like ours that we're a data analytics and technology company. I think that last part probably wasn't as strong as we wanted it to be. Um, before the cyber event, right. we took it to heart that that's who we were going to be. And we really had a couple of different paths we could go down. We could have spent a couple hundred million dollars probably and strengthened our security around our legacy infrastructure. Right. But we had a window um, internally. We had a window with our board. We had a window with our investors to do more than that. And we really opted to really transform the company and really differentiate ourselves competitively of not only improving our security, but really going cloud native. And it's really important when you think about our cloud native move, it's not just the technology in our application, but also the data. You know, at our heart, we have trillions of data records and moving that to the cloud will really transform us in a very meaningful way going forward. And so you had those two choices. What really was the, the business case or differentiator to we're gonna go and become cloud native? What was? It really starts, you know, really from my philosophy around business is uh, never, never waste a crisis. Right. It sounds trite, <laughs> no, um, but, it, but it's, so, it's so true. When, when mm. you're facing a problem, there's kind of paths you can go down to solve it. Some are easy, some are hard. Right. And some are going to solve it for a period of time, and some are going to change the company perhaps forever. And we opted for the latter, which was do a massive transformation. We had to change a lot of the people. We changed a lot of the culture. Um, we had to make sure everyone was involved. And uh, through a series of meetings with our board and internally with the team, we came to the conclusion that we were going to really double down on the cloud. It's going to provide security like never before, uptime in the data macro about how data is used, the speed of data transmissions, the ability to absorb more data, the speed of delivering products to our customers unlike never before. We believe it's going to give us a multi-year um, head start, if you will, against our competitors 
and how we're able to operate uh, competitively. And it's going to drive, we believe, market share. It's certainly, um, we, had a, we had a business case that we put together, like yeah. any company, right. that we knew there was going to be cost savings there. It was going to take our security to a place that we couldn't go in a legacy mainframe environment. But the real transformation is what it's going to do to our top line and competitiveness. And you know, that's why we did the cloud transformation. That big bet that we had this window for a 122-year-old company to really transform itself and take what was a great company before the cyber event and really turn it into a company that's going to be unlike any other going forward. The, the benefits of the cloud transformation are really just starting to take hold at Equifax. We still have a long way to go. You know, a project like this is not for the faint at heart. Right. And project's the wrong term. You know, it's really something we all had to absorb. And this is not the technology team executing this. This is the entire organization owns it. And it's really something we've all embraced because it's really going to change how we operate and how we go to market, how we deliver products, how we deliver solutions to our customers. And so do you have proof points? So like you want to be the, the premier security company. Do you have some proof points yet that are starting saying, hey, we did the right thing, it's, we're building, right? No now. question. You know, um, the security one, I think we're well down the road on. You know, and we uh, actually just put out a, a security report that we're one of the few companies that put out an annual um, data and technology security report that's a standalone report and includes third-party metrics about how are we performing versus others. And we have great progress there. You know, that's one of the big reasons right. we did one the cloud change. transformation but it's not why we did it. You know, we could have fixed our security in other ways. Right. We're gonna get massive cost benefits. You know, it's gonna take our cost structure down dramatically that'll allow us to invest more in growing Equifax. The real benefits are gonna be competitively. You know, what we're able to deliver on uptime. When you're interacting digitally, your partner, meaning Equifax, has to be up. You can't get the uptime that we're gonna deliver in a legacy hybrid cloud server environment. The only way you can get that, you know, is in this environment. So, Mark, you were sharing about you know, this transformation and the investment that the organization has made. What were kind of the key pillars of that investment? Well, it's really around moving everything to the cloud. You know, it starts with our data. You know, we have data on every American's credit history. We have uh, half of the uh, payroll records on Americans. Those data elements are massive on their own, but they sit in siloed data assets. So big investment was going to a single data fabric where you're gonna be keyed and linked that data so it can be accessible more readily by us and by our customers to deliver those multi-data solutions that drive predictability and drive better decisions. So that was a big project. Second is really moving all our technology applications and products to the cloud. And over years, you build up versions of the same product. Yep. Version one, version two, version seven, versus 10, version 12. And you're maintaining all those because you have customers on different versions. There's a ton of cost associated with that. And then there's a ton of latency, if you will, because you don't have everyone on the latest version of it. Right. So this allows us to move everyone to the very best product that we have and also improve it and make it cloud capable. So that's another big initiative for us. And then really exiting our data centers. You know, yep. those are... You know, we have massive data centers. Uh, you know, we have probably 25 around the globe. You know, we're going to go to zero, you yep. know, and there's going to be um, a lot of pr productivity savings and a lot of benefits from that. And then the last is really our products, taking all of our products to being cloud native that are going to give us the very best capabilities for our customers to really access our data in order to drive that decision. And so the next chapter, what does that look like? We're just starting on that. And we actually uh, are, are really, our strategy now for the next three years, if the last three years was investing in the cloud and building the cloud, and again, we still have work to do. Yep. Um, the next chapter is leveraging it. How do we leverage the cloud capabilities that we have that no one else has to yep. drive innovation and new products? And new products really fuel solutions for our customers to help them grow, reduce their fraud rates, more applications, Lower, lower losses, yep. and lower risk. So really leveraging the cloud. And we're really ramping up our new product focus. We brought in a whole new team and we're really trying to move to a product-led cloud native organization. And with that, really driving more solutions to market. Historically, we would deliver 70 to 80 new products per year out of yep. Equifax. We keep track of it and we have a yep. vitality index. Last year, we did 134 versus a 70 to 80, there now 134. Go. So going in the right direction, and really that's where we want to take the company going forward, is really leveraging our differentiated data assets, our cloud native capabilities to deliver solutions and innovation to help our customers grow. 
I love that. Now, at the beginning of our discussion, you talked about the need to earn trust back, right? Some of that is having this, this new transformation, the new capabilities. Investment in security. What is the, where have your customers come on that journey? Of, if we were interviewing a customer, what would they say has earned back the trust? I think the commitment, the trust issue was around the security. Are you going to right. secure the data? Yep. And it took us the better part of 2018 and 19 to earn that trust back. It took um, uh, getting our team in front of our customers and all of us being out there and talking about our plans, real transparency around what yep. we're doing around security. So security has to be in every boardroom, yep. in every CEO's priorities, and certainly is here at Equifax after what we went through in 2017. And we really just focused on earning that trust back about transparency, what we're doing. We brought in great people. But when you talk about spending a billion five and more than doubling your tech spend around technology and security to the cloud, you earn back the trust of your customers. So where are we now? That's behind us. And we've shared with them, you know, third party assessments of how our security has improved. And when you're spending that kind of money, you have the kind of people that we have here and going cloud native, which we and others believe is the most secure environment you could be in. There's less access points. You know, you don't have 12 versions of the application exactly. anymore. You don't have 60,000 servers you're trying to maintain yourself in 26 countries around the world. You're doing it in a more secure environment. You earn the trust back to your customers, and then you can go back to, which we're already in in the last 12 to 18 months, of helping them grow and really leveraging the cloud capabilities that we have. Mark, thank you so much for spending time with us and, and for your story. What a, what a fantastic story. Well, we're on to the next chapter. Yep. Thanks very much. Thank you.